All right, welcome to the post-game analysis of game one between Hano Life and Africa Freaks. We're joined by Supin Yoon, as well as Victoria and Pong. All right, Africa Freaks took the first game of the series, and both teams kind of showed disappointing performances recently. Uh, what went through in the draft phase? No, nothing uh, unorthodox occurred in the draft phase. However, uh, the ban on Poppy was a bit interesting. And also, uh, getting Ezreal and banning on Kalista allowed Africa Freaks to facilitate their team comp. And I think it's due to the uh, reasoning on why they picked Ezreal on the sheer confidence that they had, along with uh, Wukong in the top lane. And they tried to uh, shut down Wukong in the lane, however, Hano Alive failed to do so. And in the ADC battle, Israel came out on top over Aphelios in the end. Although um, two dragons were relinquished by Africa Freaks, however, on the third dragon fight, Africa Freaks was able to retaliate and take the dragon on their own. And instead of uh, going, engaging right directly, they waited for Oriana. And then, as you can see, the professional Israels, they used the Oracle Lens to check the vision. And lens, uh, Lee Han's uh, Oracle Lens was on cooldown and therefore couldn't uh, check the presence of the vision ward when they uh, went into the brush. And once the uh, once the Africa Freaks spotted Lee Hens, they immediately engaged the opponent, and then the team fight just completely dismantled um, for Hanoi Life from that point. And so the third dragon was taken by Africa Freaks, and then another uh, big accident occurs in front of the Baron Pit. Right, you can see that uh, Cube had the confidence on um, that he has uh, time to engage. However, he miscalculated and therefore gave up the isolation day to Kian. Right, so, on our life, try to uh, burst down the Nasher. And also, Africa Freaks kind of predicted that. And because uh, Aphelios didn't have Flash, so Africa Freaks immediately engaged the pawn and took three kills from the Baron Pit, despite giving up the Nasher. And both uh, scenes show that Hano Life didn't have the exact countermeasures available to counteract to Africa Freak's uh, design of engagement, and then there was nothing much that they have left to retaliate against Africa Freak. So let's check who's the player of the game for this game. So Pond picked Kiyin. And it is Kiyin in the just like uh, Pond's prediction. Although it's surprising that Kiyin, this is Kiyin's first uh, player of the game. And a lot of uh, the stories for both teams are bottom oriented. And so it's very surprising to the fact that Keen received his first uh, player of the game. Once again, Keen proved that uh, what kind of role he plays within the team in this game. And then displayed a stellar performance with his uh, Ukong. The overall performance of Africa Priest was pretty decent. Whereas Hano Life, most of their uh, plays were quite regrettable and disappointing. And despite the early game went well for Hano Life, uh, it's quite sad to see that such a result uh, was given to him. So overall, after the early phase of the game, through the mid game, uh, Africa Freaks uh, capitalized on Hano Life's mistakes. And let's see whether uh, Hano Life can rebound. 
Thank you, Brian, for that wonderful translation of the analyst desk. Brian, a new member of the global team here for Ryan. So I hope you guys give him a warm welcome. g Sun's still here, of course, but Brian is also going to be helping us with translations and interpretations from here on out. So thank you so much. And going into this, we do see that QV after his unfortunate performance here in game one, he will be subbed out. And Dudu will hopefully bring the Dududungas into game two and change stuff up for his team because it did not look very good for game one, Elvis. Yes, yeah, it definitely did not. And we'll see what's going to end up happening now where a Freaker are going to be on the blue side. And even though the way that the draft unfolded last game, interestingly enough, Hanwha Life had pretty easy access to their, their key counter picks, like the areas that they needed the counter picks to come in. They had it in bot lane because of the way that Afrika drafted, and they also had option to have it in mid lane as well as jungle. And so even if they move now over to the red side, I'm not super confident that they're going to get some serious edges being produced. Yumi banned away Hanwha Life, banning away the Varus. Varus, no surprise. Yumi, no surprise against Lehens. Set is going to be banned away here. Also a very common ban nowadays. Even though uh, both Lehens and Dudu have not played a single game of Set just yet. He's still very strong, so they take him away. As well as Karma, taking away that potential first pick. And, well, Aphelios was banned by Afrika. Will Hanwha Life ban away the Ezreal? Or will they opt for something like Wukong? Mm. I guess is another option that they could be considering. No, it's actually going to be neither. It's going to be the Orianna. So, V1 Ezreal could just come in here by Afrika. Callista no, also available, so they're going to go with that. But you've mentioned this before. It kind of like shows your hand already in yeah. terms of what kind of composition will go well with Callista. And they're, they're locking in Twisted Fate, and this strikes me as very bizarre because Hanwha Life as a team do not have a lot of coordination or cohesion. And the other thing is the way that they play out their laning phases they don't really interact with the jungle. They don't manipulate lane states or anything. Twisted Fate wants you to be doing all of those things that I just mentioned. Mm. And so it strikes me as a very, very unusual pick here by them, especially to come out so early. Azir could be locked in for fly, but Afrika could also lock jungle here at B3, wait for a little bit more information, and actually find something like a Kossadin spot. Ooh. That would be... Interesting. Yeah, we like our Cassidans here at the LCK. Just uh, watch a couple of Showmaker games and you'll find yourself enjoying it as well. Trundle here is going to be picked again. Every Korean team loves Trundle, it seems, and they're going to pick that as the first jungle in the game. And Braum is... Going to get picked up here for Hanwha Life. So they're just actually handshaking the bot lane, which is extremely surprising. Not even looking to, to try to accrue any sort of sizable edges. Mordekaiser gets banned, which strikes me as very bizarre as well, because all of their champions are pretty good at handling him. But then if Afrika would pick Mordekaiser, all of their champions, super, super, super short range. Very easy to handle. Wukong gets banned away now by Afrika. Galio is the response. It's one of the champions that can match Twisted Fate in lane push. And then also his ability to ultimate. We'll see what else ends up happening. As, okay, Nidalee is going to get banned away. Will Hanwha Life now go for something like Graves as an answer to the Trundle? 
Well, they love their Lee Sin. And, uh, you know, everybody loves LS, a.k.a. Lee Sin. So they are going to be picking him here. Uh, Cad, two games now in a row of Lee Sin. He had that one play, right, where he Wait. caught fly that didn't have flash. But that was about all I noticed from the last game of Lee Sin. I think that when you end up R4-ing Lee Sin here, it's not... LSAK Lee Sin, it's LSAK literally silver is <laughs> what ends up happening <laughs> in a spot like this. As Kennen's now going to come in blind by Afrika, they are Look, all in. Or, yeah. On the engage. They are, you know, they're going head first into the enemy team. Very different from what we saw in the last game from their composition. And what is going to round that out? They're going to go with Zoe, actually, which is interesting. It offers some pick. It's definitely a pick that Fly can play. But we do see a follow-up of Jace here for Dudu in the top side. And Hummel Life's team composition, it strikes me as quite peculiar. Mostly because it's very hard to get setups with these lanes. Obviously, they do have quite some potency in mid. Lee Sin, Twisted Fade against Zoe, but Fly's just going to take Cleanse. Probably Spellbook as well in-game. Mm -hmm. And things get very, very difficult. And in the later stages of the game, they're very prone to the all-in that Afrika has going for them. It's not like Jace and Twisted Fate kite back very well, even though they have the option to. It's not their forte. Lee Sin doesn't do a whole good job at that. So while Ezreal and Braum can answer it a little bit, it is definitely a bit surprising. Cannon, Trundle, Zoe, Callista, and Nautilus. It's going to be the team composition. Very sinful. Yeah, uh, one direction, and it's forward. Not the not the band. Yeah, yes, not the bounds. So we always have to mention that because we know you're but all very excited for one direction. I think in regards to how Hanwha Life's team composition is, it's honestly fine. Because Hanwha Life's also is straight out of solo queue. It just looks like everyone picked their favorite champions and threw it in together. Kind of does feel that way. Except they're they, picking like relatively high tier stuff. Yeah. And not like, you know, I don't know, Shaco top AP or something like that. All right. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, it just gives me flashbacks every time you mention solo queue. But uh, looks like we're ready to go into this one. Game two of Afrika versus Hanwha Life. Hummel Life have some proving to do. Game one was not pretty. That was uh, not a game we're going to remember as a good one for them. Got him. Looks like he has scorched too. You see that little bit of health yeah. that he lost? Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting excited. Definitely, yeah. Let's take a look at the runes. <laughs> well, corrupting potion, corrupting potion for TF and Jace. There's a lot of minion dematerializer nowadays. Honestly, that Ezreal skin is very nice. I like yeah? it. Yeah? Minion okay. Okay. Need to get that in onesie form, sort of. Onesie form? Doesn't look like it. Isn't that oh, like yeah, isn't that pajamas? Look, yeah, right? it yeah. is pajama. I, I forget the name of it, but something to do with pajama Ezreal. Okay. Oh, is it Star... No. No, not so no, no. Oh, man. Yeah, I forgot the, the skin name. Well, yeah. whatever. Get it it's in the a shop. Line of it. Get yours today. <laughs> yeah, it's not too expensive, probably. <laughs> By now, you might want to check it out. Just go ahead and uh, open up your League of Legends and uh, go into the store. Honestly, uh, I really love the colors. The the blue and white really reminds me of one of my favorite icons. Reminds you of, of uh, Afrika? I was going to go with uh, the, the Prime icon, but... Not okay. a big deal. Okay. And I like how that, yeah, Viper <laughs> did choose the blue and white, which is Afrika's colors. He did. And he's trying to, you know, he's trying to inch out every little bit of taunt that he can have to the enemy team. We saw a lot of that from uh, Mystic when he was playing Ezreal in the last game. Dancing in the mid lane. We've seen some pretty oppressive Callista play so yeah. far in summer. She has been moving up the ranks in terms of, uh, you know, pick ban. And what I, I want to see most 
here in particular is how Lava manages to pilot the Twisted Fate in mid. He has Spellbook. He has the Teleport. I doubt that we're going to see any hybrid Twisted Fate, given that we are in the LCK of all places. Lee Song is just going to now transition into what it looks like is, is full clearing his jungle is gonna be the option here trundle likewise yeah. just going with some full clears spirit isn't sinning this time around so yeah it's gonna be even here on cs they'll probably just split the scuttle crabs and go for that I was talking about impressiveness of Callista. She is sixth in terms of presence, but she's only been played in 13 games. She's nine and four. So a very good record so far for Callista in the LCK 2020 summer. And is definitely an AD carry that gets kind of lost in the mix a lot. We don't we don't mention her too much. It's a lot yeah. of Ezreal Ophelios and you know, sometimes uh, I don't even I don't remember any of the other eighty carries actually. So. <laughs> Ezreal, Philios, Callista. Yeah, she's like number three. You know, but often found. Senna. And all right, well, a bit of a strong trade happening down here, down in bottom. Ben and Mystic lead by about three CS right now. After Viper, we assume that he'll get all of these minions. Meanwhile, in mid, not a whole lot is going on. Lava is down one Corrupting Potion, but that's not the end of the world. The junglers are just farming, and yeah. it's Some up in 30 seconds. Someone needs to make a like a compilation video of you just saying, there's not a whole lot going on right now <laughs> <laughs> in the beginning of LCK games. Like, it happens like every game, I swear. <laughs> As, uh, well, Lava... Getting Lava right is there. getting spaced on really hard. What what does that mean? Well, Zoe's spacing. Oh, just good spacing, like good positioning from the Zoe. I, I thought it was I guess like... they don't teach you these terms down there. I don't know. I, I felt like maybe I was, <laughs> you know, it was like a boomer moment for me. Like well, it was, it was for sure. It was like you were saying, you know, he was space jamming him or something. No, definitely That's, not. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, I thought maybe that's what the cool kids are saying nowadays. But I wouldn't know anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, there's not a whole lot <laughs> in this early game. And at this point, we're just mostly waiting to see if anything will change. All the junglers are just continuing to power farm. This Not a whole lot of activity. Interesting setup. They're going to try to burst down Cad as he gets over oh. the wall, but he has flash. Oh. And it looks like one of those autos was canceled. I yeah. wonder if that would have been the kill because of press the attack. Might have made that third attack give him the little bit of a bonus. But yeah. Cad will get away. And so very unfortunate there for Afrika. They will immediately turn this into an Infernal Drake capture. Big trade down here onto the Lahens. Ooh, but Mystic did not activate Ren. And so Lahens is going to manage to get away there unscathed. This is going to be the Infernal Dragon going down. You see the pings onto it as well. Fly still has yet to recall. Twisted Fate now ahead in the CS department. And Fly went for Electrocute instead of Spellbook on Zoe, and honestly, I just really don't understand it. Especially not with the way the team comp is. Yeah. And who you're up against. And this is why Spirit has to come mid to help push the yeah. wave. Otherwise, he would have got, you know, a really hard lane state without Teleport yeah. against Teleport. And not just only Teleport, but Teleport with Unsealed Spellbook for TF. So he's going to have a massive summoner lead in that lane. You can see Lahens just trying to freeze the wave here. I stole that minion. Yep. For Viper. Just holding it. And now they are freezing. As Dudu places a control ward down there. And this is a very ugly lane state, obviously, for Mystic and Ben. So something definitely went wrong along the way. And this is a very big victory for Hanwha Life. If you're wondering how is Hanwha Life up 600 gold despite literally nothing happening, well, Twisted Fate's <laughs> passive yeah. is pretty cool. 
That is pretty much it. He's also up a bit of CS. Yeah, he, so he's up in CS and he's up in passive, so yeah, that's where uh, the majority of the gold's coming in. And honestly, I think that, well, now the wave is coming into Mystic and Ben, so they could actually pull the wave and then freeze it, especially because Dragon's not up for three and a half minutes. But it looks like instead they want to invade and steal away the blue buff. They have Fly over here as well. Then's a little bit of a trouble bubble. Doesn't make it double. See what you did there. Yeah, did you see what I did there? Yeah. I think it's time for a little bit of forbidden love, but first. No. <laughs> no time for that here no in time. this game. We got action. And it, it's going to be a three on one up in the top side, but look at the rotation. Looks like they have an idea that this is coming in. Dude, trying to bait this one, and he will effectively be able to bait that first blood. It does go over to the Lee Sin as they do set up that gank. And you could tell uh, Keen knew what was coming. He tries to slice the Maelstrom and, and do whatever he could in that moment, but just not quite able to. Did end up using the Twisted Fate ultimate no, in not. order to partake in that event. Oh, they're going to actually right. heal up against level 6 Kalista. A lot of things going wide, unfortunately, for Mystic there, but... And yeah, and at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal for the bottom lane of Hama Life. Uh, they did have to use a couple of summoners, heal, and actually Flash was used here by Viper and the exhaust from the head. So I suppose it was a bit of a better trade than I had first imagined. And now Freak are going to come over here and just casually steal away Shelly at nine and a half minutes. We'll see where they want to place that one down. And, well... We take a look at this trade, Slicing Maelstrom doing a lot of damage. Dudu knocks the cannon away. Twisted Fate coming in as well as Lee Sin. Hey, uh, let's do this, let's do this. Use your ult now. Nice. Nice. Not too much else really being said there. Keen once again losing in the laning phase, which is very surprising. Lee Sin really trying to sneak his way in here, trying to make something happen. Kick. Dragon kick available now. Yep. Can he land it? Uh, well, that's horrible. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you weren't a big fan of that play, Alex. <laughs> now, the thing is, they, they could uh, still try to dive. Uh, uh, well, everything's gonna go wide. I mean, Keen is still full health here, so he's oh, trying oh, to bait oh, him oh, in. Oh, oh, oh. And there it is. Cad coming over the wall with the kick, Wait, but do they, they have the damage? No, they do Wait. not. They almost got 1v2'd as Dudu gets extremely low down the bottom side. Kick also wasted, and now here's Spirit, and they're just baited into it 100%. Cad is absolutely gonna go yeah. down, and they put the kill onto the camp. I told you in the draft select, Valdez, Lisa, aka literally silver, <laughs> with the execution. Aww. And also, Zoe actually tagging along there, rolled redemption. Yeah. So, a very skilled. Easy. Yeah, very skilled. It's very good at this champion. And how about a follow up gank here? They're trying to bait the flash, and they get it. Oh, and lots of action. Mystic is pretty low, but the immediate cleanse and has to flash away from the uh, slow that was coming in afterwards. The Q from Viper would have landed. And so Mystic getting a little bit too feisty yep. there as some gold handed over to Fly as well. And Fly's actually very far ahead in the item department, and he can obviously thank his passive to that. Already has the Rod of Ages complete with the Merc Treads as well to boot. And Mystic right now, he's just trying to heal up with that Bilgewater Cutlass, trying to get to a healthy amount of HP. Lava does have the ultimate available. Viper and Lahan's extremely healthy. Ocean Dragon is on the table. This is going to be very surprising. Kale doesn't. K Kennen. Kale. Kennen does not have Slicing Maelstrom available. Oh, they're still going to go for still, it, though. Yeah, he's still TPing. And they you have do, the, uh, oh, the dragon stopped the bubble. That's a little bit awkward. Lahan's and, well, Kan tried to get the kick, and he is going to trade his life for Mystic. So at the end of the day, I mean, it's not so horrible. You take out the 80 carry of the opposite side for your Lee Sinning self. They're gonna stick around. And Fly says, well, I've got a nice amount of poke. 
Oh, he there you go. Fucking he is it. going to just go in and immediately take down that kill. Lahens in a lot of trouble here as well. Lava still very healthy, but he's not really able to do much at this point in the game. And they are going to be pushed back, but still Viper and Lava very healthy, and I don't think Afrika can just go for the Dragon. No, they're not going to go for it. They're all really low HP. Zoe must be sitting on, I would guess, 2,000 gold. I want to see a Ludens and a Tier 2 Boots picked up immediately on... Ooh. Honestly, that was very rude. <laughs> By Viper. That was a nice play. Yeah, it was, it was a nice... But it was still rude. It was, yeah, so you get true. A, I mean, they were just trying to recall. They were trying to go home to their families at the fountain. Yeah. And all of a sudden, yeah. They're best Shopkeeper. friends, even though he, he tricks them all the time. He really does. Into buying the wrong yeah. items. I don't know how they can be friends with that guy. Yeah. The amount that he sells books for. Absolutely <laughs> outrageous. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not dead. I'm not dead. I'm not, I'm not dead. dead. He knew already. Yeah. He's like, no, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. You know? He also has the he barrier. Oh, that's uh, true. Oh, I'm so, 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 so. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh, he was saying. No, like, I have barrier. If he nice. had, like, top top and right here, I mean, Hanwha Life, they try to start up the dragon. And the sleep does land onto Lee Sin, but the dragon helping out big time. Cat, I mean, he, he managed to squeeze his way in. That was so thin. There's a world where he just donks off and dies immediately. And then watch this. See the bubble? Chase is like, yeah, I'd like to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this game Haven't... is putting me to sleep, yeah. literally. And he also put himself in such an awkward spot to just get slicing Maelstrom in the face. Yep. So, uh, yeah, pretty awkward there. Um, at the end of the day, it was actually the True Shot Barrage from Viper that was part of the reason why they were able to easily secure the Dragon. Might have been able to get it anyway off of all the backs from Afrika as they were very low. But still, it is going to be that one. And we do have Mountain Drake Soul coming in here. Well, Mountain is going to be very unfortunate for the Jace, who's going to be going... Oh, oh he's like, not again. And he's going to stun them both up. And they're under the oh. turret now with the exhaust. Oh. And that last hit oh. is going to get the kill. And Dudu nearly goes down as Keen. Just oh. laughs in their face and nearly takes away two. Lava just going to ghost away. I want to see the replay of that one. That was so thin, but he was able to make it work. Well, oh, um, he is greeting out of his mind right now. Keen knows. Oh, man. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. <laughs> oh. Man, honestly, Viper is very rude. He's <laughs> Every single time he's doing this. Yeah, we need to put him in timeout. Yeah. He's, uh, he's really angry, if you can tell. And, uh, yeah, I mean, break, break it down for us, Ellis. Well, they go in for the Dragon Kick. They all try to go in, but then Dudu gets locked up. Exhaust available on Kennen. And so manages to use it. And Dudu, I mean, he could keep going forward, but I'm pretty sure it would be a trade at that point. Huh? Yeah, he would have. Oh. So, Turtle Bell okay. actually used a little bit late. Doesn't end up mattering. Oh, well. Oh, what is this? <laughs> yeah, it's almost like yeah. Keen is like disgusted. He's like, oh, what was that? Like, yep. <laughs> not impressed. Lands a full shock blast. Now, he is behind an EXP. Oh, okay. here's Cad again. This is like going up against a duo Q. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just constantly try to force it. Kadoodoo. The two of them together. I mean, they played a lot together in the yeah. beginning. That was, uh, you know, the new duo that was coming in for top and jungle. The new duo? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Perfect. Yep. Nicely done. And the uh, the gold cap has been put down to a very small margin now, about 150 gold between the two top laners because of all the shenanigans. At least Cat is doing something. You know, it's better than him just sitting back and farming like we've seen out of some Lee Sins. Well, at this point, Viper and Lahens are just trying to make it out of the landing phase. We'll see what Viper can do on Ezreal later on. And if he can manage to actually carry Mountain Dragon 
50 percent or 50, what? 50 seconds until Mountain Drake <laughs> yeah. is going to come up. Kennen should have the Zanya's Hourglass available for that, or at least at, at the very least, stopwatch should be available. And Keen does have teleport available, so we'll see what he ends up doing here. If he just ends up recalling in that brush, okay, he will. Not much else happening down there. Just sitting back, relaxing. Yeah. And Fly, you know, he, he hasn't picked up a kill, but he's 004 right now. Ooh. Casually picking that one up. He's been very accurate with the skill shot so far. Yeah. On the Zoe, he has played two games of Zoe so far. He's a one-on-one. -on -one. Looking to get above 50% today. I I mean, they're investing wards onto the left-hand side. Uh, well, you're just going to be stunned immediately. And Dudu is trying to uh, die here. Down he goes. What is everyone just... And, well, there's a stopwatch. Cat is going to not get in position for the kick. As that might have been one of the worst die... Oh, they're... Oh. Oh. Oh, they're, they're going for it. Okay, well... Viper trying to ult his redemption. teammates. <laughs> He hit them, you know, it worked. <laughs> oh, man. What am I watching? That was, uh... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, it's like uh, Pepe laugh and Pepe hands at the same time. <laughs> Do but we if have you're, to watch this if you're If you're an Afrika fan, it's why people happy. True. So, yes, very let's take a look at this. I, I'm not going to say nice things about this. Because there's there's pretty much nothing really. I, it was handed to Keen on a silver platter. This is like this is this is like installing a game nowadays compared to like 20 years ago. Yeah. 20 years ago, you had to like put in the CD-ROM, enter the CD oh. key. You know yeah. what I mean? But like, this is like download the client. Yeah. Would you like to install the game and he clicks oh. yes? He's not. He's like yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> I'm gonna he, live. Yeah, he's probably gonna live. I can teleport later. I can teleport later. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I lived. He's like, oh, yeah, um, okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Yeah, he, uh, he wasn't really having any of that. Keen, he, uh, he's been bullied this game, that's for yeah. sure. But it's like, you know, those videos, the Justice Sir Serve videos, where the bully the bully stands up to the bully? Yes. That's what Keen is doing. Well, Keen is honestly very, very strong right now in this game. Has magical boots and the amp tome in his pocket. They did pick up the mountain dragon, which is a bit of a nightmare for TF and for Jace as well. I mean, as well as Lee Sin, even. Also, I have no idea why Ezreal. Ezreal doesn't get yeah, penned. He's going. Right? <laughs> yeah, e Ezreal doesn't get penned. Twisted Fate doesn't typically get pen. Yeah. It's very hard for these champions to come by pen. And when you're building lethality, it does hurt when the opponents are just getting free armor resistances. Yeah. Oh, again? There's three of them! Oh, oh no, it's just two. Close your eyes! <laughs> close the mouth that's... Can I take it back? I don't want to see this again. Keen is just running away. Turn on the lights for me. <laughs> oh, no. He has TP2. Oh, no. Cat is here. He's like, oh, 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 oh sorry. The principal has arrived. <laughs> Stop this bullying. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Like, they just, they can't accept the fact that they're not going to kill Keen. It's not going to happen. Just give up. You're not going to kill him. <laughs> We're watching Hanwha Life <coughs> manage to burn boiled water. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're actually seeing. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned in the pick ban about picking TF for this team. And uh, they have, you know, we've seen the result. They have struggled to make plays happen. Unfortunately, Fly is just gonna chunk the turret, so he's pretty good at that. And even though it's only like a 1,000 gold lead, uh, they have Infernal and Mountain, which, you know, the Infernal's great for all the damage they have. 
and the nice amount of scaling, and then, of course, the mounts that we already talked about. So it's, well, a, it's a bit more than just the 1,000. Yeah, I, I, Hanwha Life, e even if the gold score puts them at being somewhat even, they're not at all. Yeah. At least then, so much worse than Trundle in a vacuum. The Jace, in regards to the team compositions, so much worse than the Kennen in a vacuum. Twisted Fate, what is his purpose, really, in this game at this point? Because he can't split push. He doesn't team fight as well as Zoe. And the Ezreal, I mean, it all really falls on to him. I, we're going to divert your eyes for the book that's on Zoe. What healing is on Hanwha Life? Break it down for me, Dalton. Uh, ah, the spellbook heal that Twisted Fate's going to get. What? what? That was weird. <laughs> yeah, I think they're trying to divert what their eyes. That? I'm not... Not totally sure. Goes to the LCK arena, trying to infiltrate the stream. Um, yeah, uh, Ezreal is gonna get Death's Dance. Uh, that's not actually healing. <laughs> well, yeah, it's uh, you know, it's just a little bit of loss to Shopkeeper. Again, Shopkeeper. He's Sometimes a, it happens. He's a clever guy. Yeah. You, know, he, you, you think he's your friend? There you but go. He's not actually. As well, Lee Sin is just gonna hop away. They don't really lose anything for that. And a nice ultimate there from Viper. Nothing else really landing afterwards. And there is a decent amount of poke here on the side of Hama Life with Ezreal and the Jace. And it was mostly Ben that ate uh, all that poke. So he's just gonna go back. Hama Life not running at the dragon or anything like that, so a freak have time. Mystic can't can't take too much damage. I mean, now he does have the minions here, so he is going to be able to life steal back up this again. You know, I, I think they should try to gain Keen again. Yeah, I think that might be the Lava one does have teleport available, so we shall see. What? Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. Why? That was a nice shot as by Doo Doo. Just as much damage. Yeah. And, well, Fly is not going that way. Actually, I'll end one. Things to the right side. Yeah. I'm actually very surprised that they haven't started up the dragon. Tele well, actually, Keen needs to recall. Okay, that's what he's doing. And the ping goes down onto TF. He's going to TP in. I wouldn't even be surprised if it's a frontal teleport right into the heart of Hanwha Life if they really try to contest. Spirit is taking a lot of damage, but that is going to be the Callista getting that one. Mystic kind of wanted to go forward, but maybe just trying to push them away. And yeah. that's another free Mountain Drake just given over to the side of Afrika. And this is the very awkward situation here. Are they going for two Morellos? <laughs> I'm not going to make it. <laughs> Just put on your last stand. We need you to make it through the potential last game here. My large sunglasses are necessary <laughs> at this point. Just trying to block your view. Um, yeah, I, 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 I have, I have hope. I have hope that the blasting wand is going elsewhere. Do you think so? Yeah, I have. Where else? I. What do you think? How about a, uh, a void staff? That would be okay. Yeah, you're Good. going up yeah. against trip, uh, quadruple Merc Treads yeah. and Death's Dance. Yes. So you definitely need Void Staff. And you know that Jace has MR runes? Probably on him as well. Yeah. And Twisted Fate as well against Zoe is going to have MR runes. So definitely not bad. He could just pick up the Void Staff. If he picks up the Morello, I've lost faith. <laughs> is what ends up going on here because there is no healing to reduce. There is... I, Death Dance, no. Absolutely not. Lee Sin uh, W2 gets lifesteal. True. <laughs> so you might want to cut some of that down. And there's not a whole lot... There it is. <laughs> we got some expensive books. And uh, that does feel like a lot of wasted gold, to be honest. That's 1,400 in both mid and top that are, uh, you know, not really going to be doing anything, to be quite honest. They don't need to take a fight right now. They don't desperately need the stats. Just to, uh, you know, just to go over to some stuff that we've mentioned many times before. 
And uh, I might just be the lone survivor on the desk now, as I think I lost. <laughs> I'm here. He may have left us. We got two and a half minutes to the mountain. Lost spirit. Well, the, the other, the, I mean, the even worse thing about completing Morello right now is there's no impending team fight. Yeah, so, that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying, you know? You're allocating gold towards an item that isn't really, you, you would be much better investing the gold into the Sork Pen Boots even uh, at this point in time because there's no healing to reduce anywhere so and th the the age-old argument is healing reduced versus excess damage dealt and is is you know x greater than y um and that's all that it really comes down to so when the opponents have so much magic resistance you can just sit on the blasting wand eventually complete into void staff at that point i mean additionally they're all stacking hp to an extent so Leandre's isn't even necessarily that bad, but uh, there's really no reason to have the two mages invest 3,000 gold to get Grievous Wounds when Callista could just pick up an Executioner's. And with Runon's Hurricane, would apply it very often as well. But again, there's no healing, and I'm going to complain yeah. about this because this is one of the grossest spots I've seen in LCK this year. You immediately, uh, you know, went to take a picture the second you saw it. You're I like, still have yet know? to make my Instagram account for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Morello. As well. Okay, well he's probably gonna go Void Staff now, but it's a little bit late. So with the money that he allocated towards Morello and Omicron, he could have already probably uh, almost had Void Staff. Definitely, maybe before this Mountain Dragon, at the very least, Orc Pen Boots with an Amp Tome. Yeah, would have been there. No denying that. That is for sure. You see the uh, the gold difference in the mid lane. That's uh, actually towards the TF. And yeah, a lot of what's keeping Hanwha life in this right now is actually it, it's some of the CS score and Twisted Fate's passive. Because he has 50 CS over the Zoe. And when you factor in his passive, his die rolls on 322 CS, it, it's pretty nuts. That is what's making the gold score so close. But don't be fooled, they have an Infernal Dragon which is super valuable. And they have double Mountain Drake, so 12% amp to all of these champions. That's several hundred gold for basically everyone for free. Yeah. So gold score for Afrika, especially when you factor in team composition, it's probably more like 6,000. Would be it maybe perhaps an accurate representation. Did he just teleport? Well, Didn't quite. No, I'm not sure. Yeah, Here yeah, we go. That. Okay, Destiny, Gate. Trying to get on top of Fly, but he's got Cleanse. And this is Soul. Keen got level 16. Yeah, here he comes with his teleport, and the knockup immediately comes in. They're going to get at least Lens in the front line, but another follow up hook here, and a double knockup comes in from the Nautilus. As this is not looking good for Hobble Life, that's going to be another kill. A great True Shot Barrage. But oh. in will go Keen, finally finds his moment, and they're finally going to get Viper. Took a little yeah. while, but in the end, they're only going to lose the Nautilus for taking down four members of Hanwha Life. Yeah, and that's going to be the game, because Afrika, they're going to move over. They're going to get the Mountain Soul, and that, that's going to be all she wrote. And, you know, you saw the team fight unfold there, where Hanwha Life, they're trying to hold a Phalanx, but, like, Twisted Fate is thinking, why am I here? Gleason is wishing that... He also had Lost Sensation and probably Def as well as his Lost Sight okay. as the team fight unfolded. But I just feel pretty bad as Hanwha Life, they just, they meet their inevitable demise here. All the champions can't really do anything and a breaker is just so far ahead, they just plow right through them. They end up turret diving the mid tier too. They could have just easily turned around, gotten the soul if they want to play it super captain careful. But Keen going in, slicing mail. Oh, that was a really insane Nautilus hook. Landing onto Viper as well. And now with 18% amp to all their stats, Deathcap finally picked up here by Zoe. Total damage to Champions last team fight. Pretty good by Kennen and Callista. Yep, they do a lot of damage. Jason, Ezreal do as well. But there's more resistances, more health, more of everything on the side of Afrika, now even more gold, which hasn't always been the case in this game. And effective gold, of course, as we mentioned, very far ahead. 
they're kind of baiting another fight here. They're just saying, okay, I mean, if you want to just run it down mid, we are fine to fight you. We're definitely not scared of fighting you now with Mountain Soul. They're going to find the Braum again, who is desperate to try to get out of this one. Mystic is going to get kicked away, but it just doesn't matter. They're going to dog them down again. And will Lava just ult out is my question. Yeah. Oh, he's going to get denied too. Oh, Penta? That, that looks really unfortunate. Will we see another Penta? Penta. Maybe. Oh, <laughs> why? <laughs> why? He puts up the thumbs up too. It's like, yeah, buddy, no Pentas for you anymore. Lee Sin was really far away anyway. I don't, I don't think they would have gotten it. But Yeah, Lee would not have let them get it. No. And, well, it does look like they can just charge up mid lane here. They are pinging for the end. They do not have a teleport available to lock anything up, but, well, with the mountain soul shields and the innate tankiness, I mean, dude is going to come up, he's going to run forward, acceleration gate, EQ, shock blast, do nice about 200 damage miss. Lahens pinned against the turret, not able to go anywhere. That's going to be it. Yep. Viper, he's going to try to, you know, boost his damage stats here, and actually a Freak are going to try to boost their KDA stats. They're going to get the one, and they're not going to get Viper, it doesn't look like. As GG, that's going to be the end of game two, a very one-sided series going the way of Afrika as they stomp down Hanwha Life here for their third win in summer. Now Hanwha Life's fifth loss in a row here in summer. So nothing going right for them as they still struggle. And Afrika looking pretty good once again. And Afrika, I mean, they pulverized them in the mid transition, in the mid to late transition, because Hanwha Life looked very lost. I ended up giving the MVP to Keen, but it, I mean, if we're being honest, the MVP is Lee Sin. Yeah, so I mean. The, the overly forced plays at so many points that didn't really have a purpose. There was so much miscoordination also. And with the draft being the way that it was, they can't afford to have stuff like that happen. So Afrika, they just got to walk away with being cohesively a much better team that with the super stable, safe, passive early games, they get to the mid game, they're just much better. And with the complete blunder and fumbles happening against Keen, everything just really, really falls apart. And these are the hardest problems for teams to fix because the people that should identify where the problems are going wrong are gonna look for where they immediately start rather from the buildup. And so they aim to fix problems rather than prevent them. And when you can't prevent the problems, you're just gonna have a continuously difficult split. Yeah, uh, the the prioritization on the lease in was definitely a question for me, for Hanma Life here. Uh, their prioritization on Kaisa in the past was another question. That might have been Viper really trying to push the issue. We're not sure. And uh, yeah, just just doesn't seem like Hamel Life have it in them this time around to make a real imprint on Summer. Um, yeah. Don't think there are relegations, at least this time around. No, the franchising coming next year. So I, I suppose, you know, the teams at the bottom can avoid that at least. The worrisome thing is that their roster as well, I know that there's been some speculation that Vista is now playing other roles as well, but none of the names really stand out, even when you look them up on solo queue as being like, okay, well maybe they can, they can try utilizing this player. And so it's a very difficult and unfortunate situation to try to work with. And like I was mentioning, if you don't look to prevent problems rather than just fix them, you're gonna end up in this constant loophole because the intent of the players is infinitely more important than the end result. The intention is that they're opting into extremely high variance things and they're lacking any sort of coordination in order to make things go smoothly and successful. And it, it's really, really bad. And when you're losing all the time, it probably also affects the team environment. It's very hard to remain mentally sound during stuff like that. And all of this is just very unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, that's one way to put it. Uh, there were, it was like they were banging their head on the wall, just desperately trying to make an impact. And uh, well, we get to see once again, what kind of impact that was. It was just 
nothing. Good stopwatch. I mean, he played it really well for yeah. getting camped and for, you know, circumstances. Definitely could have been played better by Hamalife, no question. Spirit and Ben, you know, small mention to them. They use their abilities really well to lock up the members of Hanwha Life. Obviously, it's very easy when you're going in one direction, and that is forward. Keen, really nice follow-up here. And, yeah, to be honest, I mean, it, it wasn't a very competitive series. It was just a, a bit of a stomp to zero. And I, I think that's part of the reason why we're talking a lot about Hama Life right now and their issues rather than Afrika and, you know, their win. Because I think in this scenario, you should expect Afrika to win one-sidedly. Otherwise, you're a little bit worried for Afrika. Yeah in this position, so. Oh, well, one of the things I am worried about is the early in mid. Early into, early mid as well, sort of, but the early and mid transition is also very scary because you can't constantly rely on just going super even and then outplaying the, that, that, that is high variance Okay. Spirit was kind of the calming voice in those comms multiple times saying, you know, it might not be over, you know, let's take it slowly, be careful. And, uh, yeah, I mean, at the end of it, though, even with a couple of members of Jace and Ezreal spawning back in, it, it just didn't make enough of a difference with the pushing power that they had. And there you have it. The graph <laughs> seemingly just spiking up there towards the end. There's also a spike from red into blue that you can see there at around 30 minutes. That was around the Mountain Soul, I and believe. A, a lot of the reason that the gold graph is as close as it, as it was was because the Twisted Fate was doing actually pretty good in the CS department, but then also his passive yeah. was carrying a lot. He was up 50 CS at one point over Zoe. 350 farm deep. I mean, it's pretty nice. He had a fun time, yeah. uh, no doubts. But unfortunately, didn't mean that he could win the game. As Keen is going to get a second player of the game in a row for a solid cannon performance in this game. Oh, we get to see it again. <laughs> yeah, not much else to say about that. And uh, yeah, I mean, Keen, you know, his micro mechanics are very good. He's definitely one of the most dangerous players to do this kind of style against. But they felt forced into it. Everything was just so forced. I mean, even in this trade as well, it looked like Lava was the one for it. I, I'm not even sure who was calling for that one. This was obviously the end of the game. Afrika didn't need to opt for that. Honestly, that Nautilus hook was her. That was, that was, yeah. That was a word I cannot say. Yes. And uh, Ben, he had a good game. You know, uh, there, there wasn't. Too many opportunities for him to have highlight flashy plays, but he did his job very well, so shout out to him. And we're just going to be hearing from Keen. By the way, 11 out of 11 were the votes for the Keen of the player of the game. So I'm going to hand it over to, I would assume, Brian for the player of the game interview. All right. This is the winner's interview from uh, the Freaks, uh, Keen, the sole POG. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right, congratulations, not only on the win, but also your uh, three-year anniversary since your debut. All right, tell us how, about, how do you feel about the victory? And we got a clean sheet, so I feel good about that. As well as uh, getting another W in my third year anniversary. Uh, most of the POG points went to Mystic and Ben at the bottom lane. Although you mentioned that you're not really uh, going for the POG points, However, weren't you disappointed that you actually haven't received one yet? Although I was uh, disappointed, but I got used to it because our team's uh, bot lane was doing well. But if 
feels uh, refreshing. Or do you like games that where you carry, or do you like the games where you get carried by others? The latter, obviously, because it feels much more comfortable mentally. Right, speaking of the bus ride, Mystic said in his uh, previous interview that uh, riding on Keen's bus doesn't really feel that comfy. Oh, what do you think about uh, your today's performance? Do you think you gave him a good ride? I just did what I usually do. And there are days when things go well. Whereas some days it doesn't. So. No, there were uh, moments where you uh, achieved solo kills as well as you had to uh, fend off the enemy's assault. Uh, how do you feel? No, I didn't feel anything in particular in game one, but in game two I was able to survive multiple times. So that was, that was uh, great for me. Uh, were there any words within the team about uh, the use of Oriana? Because uh, Oriana was picked blindly. So Fly really likes to use Oriana in general, so I think that's the biggest reason. Alright, heading to uh, Game 2. The top in jungle duo from Hana Life is consistently uh, attempting to pick you apart and shut you down. Did you have any expectations that they will uh, try to attempt to shut you down in the first place? <laughs> well, while I was uh, playing in the lane phase, I had a very uh, discomfort playing the game uh, because uh, they were consistently converging onto, onto me. The biggest disappointment is that uh, the things weren't uh, flowing too well for our team in spite of me uh, being shut down throughout the entirety of the game. So in the voice chat, uh, some of the players were mentioning that this ain't over yet, so you gotta uh, focus more. And that was very uh, impressive. Uh, what happened? Was there a lack of chemistry and communication amongst all of you? I think we got too impetuous when we tried to uh, seal the deal, and that's why I think uh, there were discrepancies amongst our communication. Yeah. It's been a while since you said anything to your fans uh, because you haven't received POG in a while. But I doubt anybody won't be supporting you because of your spectacular plays. And a lot of players have been uh, waiting to hear from you, so any words to the fans? Although it would be very uh, great that if I get more POGs, but uh, team victory is first, so i rather consistently get bus rides from my teammates and we compile the Ws as a team. Now your next series is against uh, KT, so any resolution heading to your upcoming series? Now in the spring split, uh, KT was on a losing streak until they uncuffed it by taking, down, taking us down, so I'll try to uh, prep as much as possible and then get the W against KT. And once again, congratulations to uh, Keen and back to the casters. Thank you, Brian. Once again, a new addition to the global team over here at Riot for your wonderful translation. Happy to have you here helping out G-Sun with some of the translations and interpretations on the English side. And just taking a look at the standings here, you can see that Afrika take one step towards the west and actually will move one yeah. small step ahead of T1 after that one. Whereas Hamalife, unfortunately, they're going to be joining Sandbox down there towards the bottom. Yep. And it's always interesting to try to group up the standings in terms and of, you know, which teams are where. Yeah, KT obviously is also having a very similar to spring kind of a start here. Yeah. And SP is also sort of floundering about right now. But really, it, it's looking like there's a top six right now in LCK. Pretty much, yeah. And the bottom four are all really struggling. The bottom two are it's like really six, in. two, and two. Yeah. Yeah. And the, and the bottom two are in a depth of their own. So yeah. 
if we had relegations, I think we would know already. And it's very early on. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's it's extremely early in the beginning of round one. But guys, we do have a bit of a long break. But when we do come back eventually, it's going to be DRX versus Team Dynamics, a massive matchup. So make sure you tune in in just a bit for that.